From the time that you were bartending and you started the Skinny Confidential, what was that period of time like where you were trying to gain traction and really sacrifice and put your all into it? I was so focused on the long game that I wasn't really paying attention to when I would get out of bartending. I was just focused on putting my head down, doing what I needed to do, vlogging every single night, consistency, quality. I really didn't lead with fear. I, I didn't question myself. I just like took the leap. And that period was when I was bartending and still blogging and I didn't kind of know. You feel it. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling where you're like, okay, it's time for me to like transfer full time. And when I transferred full time to blogging, I never looked back. I mean, you always find a way. Like once you kind of let go of all those things, you find a way to make everything happen. If you want to do something, you fucking figure out a way to do it. Okay. I don't care what it is. I am a huge believer in figuring it out. So yeah, have you always had that entrepreneur spirit about you? Like even before you started? I think the entrepreneur spirit came when the Skinny Confidential idea came. Okay. And then I was, then I tapped into this and it was so stimulating that I was like, whoa, it almost blew me away. I've always been the type of person to beat to the tune of my own drum ever since I was like very young. That's awesome. And that's kind of how my career's been is I've just, like I've winged it. And when you say, when did I know I was an entrepreneur? When I started to kind of tap into that. I feel like the Skinny Confidential has grown so much and I think a lot of that is attributed to your realness and then also the trust that I think readers have in you. How do you establish that trust? There's not been like this like leap in trust from my readers. It's been something that's been like very slow mm -hmm. and I've just really tried to make sure that I'm kind of present every single day. Like on Snapchat, I will return all messages and I'm really engaging with them. And I think that where the trust comes from is they see that, that it is genuine and I would never recommend a product that I wouldn't use. I think that we're living right now in a world that a lot of people are um, whether you're a celebrity or an influencer, recommending things that maybe they wouldn't actually use. Mm -hmm. And I, again, like I said, people smell bullshit. What's a major lesson that you've learned along the way as you've been running your own business? You have to get your business under control. I think that, that as an influencer, if you really want to take it seriously, like it's fun to post pictures and Instagrams and Snapchats, but there is a huge business aspect to it. And that was really hard for me to learn because I'm more of a creative, but I've really learned from Michael to really water the area of the business because as important it is to be creative, you also have to have that aspect to run a flourishing company. That's cool. I mean, I feel like, yeah, with any business, designer or, you know, photographer, the people in the creative industry, I think need to see that, you know? A hundred percent. Because it's like very easy to get wrapped up in being creative, but kind of let the business part go to the side. Their creativity almost gets in the way. Right. I wanted to talk to you about a few of your favorite pieces, but first kind of tell me what your style is, your personal style. My personal style is a very classic, traditional, almost plain with a twist. I like very like simple simple but then something with a little flair okay so tell me a little bit about this piece so you wore this to your bachelorette party I, yes i wore this to my bachelorette party i wore it with a huge white trouser the sleeve is so intense i know i'm I all love. about this sleeve I yeah i love this i love the sleeve um and it was by grace lovelace and this was probably the most bridal moment i had was at my bachelorette party oh wow so michael my husband is very into leathers he has like 20 different leathers and i didn't have one so he got this for me as a gift and it's just like the perfect like yummy leather jacket it fits so well it looks like it does i feel like there's so many ways you can wear this like, yeah the options are limitless and it's been all over the world with me. Okay, so this looks like it has a really good story. This is my favorite thing ever. It belonged to my grandma and it actually still has her lipstick in it. Wow. Um, she had it ever since I was little and it, again, it's like adding that little twist to an outfit. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just carry this with my phone. Um, I'm very careful. I definitely don't drink too much tequila when I have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but every time I look at it, I think about her and I just like love this fabric. I love stuff that reminds me of someone. So yeah. this is like very important to me.
So we're gonna put a little bit of the spotlight on Michael for a yes. second. Oh, he'll love that. He's here. <laughs> he would be, like smile, be grinning from ear to ear. Yeah. <laughs> he just seems 100% supportive of you and like everything you're doing. What is it like working with him? Michael is very different from me. We are very much opposite, but we have the same sense of humor. I would say the best tip with relationship and working with someone is recovery. Like, you have to be able to recover from a fight quickly. Like, if, if we don't agree on something, like, the next minute we're asking, like, what we want for dinner. And let me tell you, it is a dance that we've had to learn. Like, there have been many fights, many blowouts. It's something that you learn how to do. It's like, it's like walking or riding a bike. Like, you learn how to work together. It's not something that comes naturally, at least for us. Yeah, so you guys work on the podcast together too. What kind of made you think you wanted to start a podcast and how is your audience responding to it? We were in Cabo and we were drunk and he was like, let's start a podcast. And I was like, that's genius. And basically it's about branding and sex and business. And we just did it as a way to connect further with the audience. Our podcast is really not about money. That's not what we're thinking right now. We're thinking of like cultivating this community where we can have this one-on-one -on -one call ins with our audience and like really connect with them and have them ask personal questions and like it's more of like a brand extension as opposed to like just making money. And it's not about the way you look. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's nothing like this. It's about the content. It's about the content and about laughing and having fun. <laughs> I love podcasts. I like how it's a good mix of you guys being funny and kind of going back and forth and you know the guests that you bring on but also bringing in those business tips or like the tips of the week or whatever. I like the balance of it, you know? We want it to be like you're learning and you're gaining knowledge, but you're also laughing. What's next for you and the Skinny Confidential? I'm launching a product line. Um, I'm still like hesitant to like really put it out there because I want to make sure it's perfect because I'm psycho until I launch it. <laughs> And um, I think next is just building the brand slowly. I really just want to like water what I already have, grow the product line, maybe another book. I'm thinking of also maybe bringing a more real element to blogging. I'm kind of sick of the facade. The whole entire time I blog, I want to be able to bring something more raw. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. That's really interesting. Because I already feel like you bring so much realness to you know your brand anyway. So for you to even dive deeper into that. And yeah, like I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I don't that's know. That's pretty awesome. So even though you're constantly working on everything, do you take time to kind of reflect and think about how far you've come? And I know you're going so many more places. You have a lot on your plate. but. Do you think about how it's so surreal that you know, you've know you made all this happen? I don't. And this answer probably isn't like a textbook answer. I, I knew where I was going because what I've done is I've created a strategic future by design. When you create a strategic future and you lay out the way your life is mapped out, you're designing your life. Now obviously things happen that, that throw you off the horse, but you get back on. So everything that has happened to me is because I have made it happen. So to, to sit like there and be like, oh, I reflect on like, I used to be a bartender and, and now I'm a full-time blogger. Yeah. It's like, I don't ever do that because when I was a bartender, I knew in five years, this is what I would be doing. <laughs>